Hello and welcome to Dota 2 Cast's first hero strategy guide. Today we will be looking at Juggernaut, a melee agility carry hero. Juggernaut is a unique hero because of his ability to smoothly transition from a powerful early game into an equally strong late game carry. He is a favorite pick among public Dota games due to his ability to easily net level 1 kills with a good setup. However, he is seen less often in competitive games for a few reasons that I will discuss later in this strategy guide. For now, let's get into Juggernaut's skills. Juggernaut's first ability is what makes him such a menace in the early game. Blade Fury is a skill that causes the Juggernaut to spin, dealing heavy magic damage in a small area around him while rendering immune to spells for 5 seconds. This skill deals a total of 400 magic damage at level 1 and 700 at level 4. Because of the very high magic damage output from Blade Fury, Juggernaut is often able to net early kills and sometimes even a level 1 first blood. This skill also silences Juggernaut, preventing him from using his other abilities. However, keep in mind that Juggernaut is still able to use items. Blade Fury is one of the most versatile skills in the game because of its ability to be used both offensively and defensively by taking advantage of the magic immunity that it grants. For instance, Juggernaut is able to completely channel a teleport scroll while remaining spell immune. This makes for a very handy escape mechanism. Juggernaut's second ability is called Healing Ward. This ability creates a mobile healing ward that regenerates a flat rate of up to 5% of the max health of any units within its relatively large AoE. This skill, like Blade Fury, is very versatile. It can be an asset both in teamfights and in pushing. There are two catches to this ability, however. The first is that the ward has a melee 1 HP. Keep in mind, though, that it is spell immune, so it won't be destroyed by AoE spells. In addition to this, Juggernaut also has a somewhat limiting mana pool through the early and middle game, so the skill is often not taken until around level 10. When using this ability, try to position it out of reach of the enemy heroes so that you can take full advantage of the AoE healing that it bestows upon your team. Some of the best places to plate the ward are on cliff ledges and within trees where enemies will be unable to kill the ward without some source of vision. Juggernaut's third skill is a passive called Blade Dance. This skill is a stock 2x critical strike that will proc on 36% of attacks at level 4. This skill is one of the reasons that Juggernaut is able to scale so well into the late game. This skill is generally taken at levels 2, 4, 8, and 9. However, it can be taken later if you feel that a level of 2 of stats will benefit you more in the lane. Juggernaut's ultimate is an interesting skill called Omni Slash. This ability allows Juggernaut to jump to a nearby unit becoming invulnerable and uncontrollable while unleashing a series of slashes that deal between 150 and 250 physical damage each. This skill has a cast range of 450 and a search range of 425 units. Only the first strike of the skill is controllable. After the first strike, Juggernaut will perform his next attack on a random unit within the skill's search range. Because of this, the skill is most effective when targeting a lone hero. This way, all of the slashes will be concentrated on that hero. At max level, this skill performs a total of 8 strikes and can be one of the most potent abilities in the game, if used on a lone hero. Additionally, the duration of this skill at max level is about 3 seconds, and Juggernaut is able to perform auto attacks between slashes of his ultimates. Now that I have introduced the Juggernaut and his abilities, let's go over what items you should purchase and where you should go at the start of the game. Juggernaut is almost always played in the team's short line with at least one other hero. Generally, you want your lane partner to be a ranged hero that requires little farm since you will be requiring most of it for your rather expensive item build. Some good examples are Crystal Maiden, Lion, Shadow Shaman, Lich, Lena, and Witch Doctor. Juggernaut can also be played in a tri-lane with at least one of the aforementioned heroes in conjunction with another hero that has a stunning ability. Tri-lanes, however, are often ineffective in lower level games due to the lack of coordination. Because of this, I'll focus this guide mainly on a 2v2 laning setup. As for items, I personally like to buy a healing salve, one set of tangos, a ring of protection, and three ironwood branches. This affords some good health regeneration and stats while enabling you to finish your ring of basilisk from a side shop for a mere 325 gold. Starting items aren't set in stone, so it's best that you choose what you are most comfortable with. For example, you can swap out the Ring of Protection for a Stout Shield or a Sliver of Agility, 
just trying to make sure you have enough regeneration to last you until you can start purchasing your first items. If you are in a lane with a ranged hero who has a disable, it can be beneficial to not review yourself at the very beginning of the game. If you see that the opposing lane has a hero with low starting health, tell your ally to come around with you to attempt to first blood with Blade Fury. If this is not the case, simply enter the lane normally and begin to farm last hits. If you are facing one or more ranged opponents, you will only want to be approaching the creeps to place last hits or denies, since Juggernaut is melee and relatively fragile. If you're having a hard time, in the case of a dual ranged enemy lane, it's often helpful to instruct your lane mate to deny creeps starting from half health, so that the creep equilibrium is pulled as close to your tower as possible. Additionally, you can pull and stack creeps if you're in the shard lane. As the laning vein progresses, try to capitalize on any missteps that your opponents make so that you can net a kill. When you hit level 6, your threat level is at its maximum. With up to 750 physical damage from your ultimate, and around 600 magic damage from your spin, you have the damage output to take down almost any lone hero at this stage in the game. The limiting factor on your damage, though, is your mana. At level 6, this combo requires 310 mana, and at this point, if you bought 3 ironwood branches, you will have just enough mana to cast this if you are at full mana. A strategy that I use is that I position myself near the creep wave, where there are only 1 or 2 creeps remaining. I will advance towards the enemy hero. If they fear your spin, they will run away from the creeps to their tower. At this point, you should initiate with your ultimate and follow up with spin. If they choose to come towards you so that they are protected by their own creeps from your ultimate, initiate with spin and follow up your ult with your ultimate instead. Often, you can net an easy kill at level 6 using this tactic. Once you have a bit of gold from last hits, and maybe even a hero kill or two, you should begin to work towards your core items. Ring of Health is often purchased early in the game from the side shop once your regeneration runs out to prevent losing out on golden experience from running back to the fountain. When it comes to boots, Juggernaut has three viable choices. Phase boots, power treads, and boots of travel. Phase boots are my personal choice because of the enhanced mobility phase gives to chase with, while also giving decent damage to improve your last hitting. When chasing with phase boots, make sure to always activate phase after you have already begun Blade Fury. If you do it the other way around, Blade Fury will dispel the phase effect. Boots of Travel can be taken if you happen to be farming extremely well and can utilize the ganking and farming abilities that Boots of Travel provides to you with teleport. Additionally, Boots of Travel always ensure that you will have a strong escape mechanism when used in conjunction with Blade Fury's spell immunity. Power Treads are often the boot of choice when it comes to carries, however I would like to advise against them because Juggernaut really needs mobility because he is both melee and lacking of a mobility skill. After the early game, things get hectic with Juggernaut quickly, and there's no way that I will be able to tell you everything that you should do under every circumstance, so I'll go over a few key points and rules to remember. First, keep in mind that the reason Juggernaut is seen less than frequently in competitive games is that he is a melee carry that has no innate mobility skill. He also happens to lack any real AoE. Because of this, he is often easy to kite with an opposing range hero. In order to correct this, Juggernaut's core generally consists of items that will boost his mobility while still affording a bit of damage. As I mentioned earlier, I like to build phase boots for this very reason. After this, you can turn your Ring of Health into a Battle Fury if you are farming well, and think that you will be able to farm freely with the item's cleave ability for quite some time. If this is not the case, I like to keep the Ring of Health in my inventory and head towards either a Yasha or a Lothar's Edge, which is now called Ghost Blade. You should notice that all of these items afford some damage and mobility, but no health. And because of this, if I still have my Ring of Health, I'll often just turn it into a Vanguard for some much needed survivability. Keep in mind, this isn't the only way to build Juggernaut, it is simply one way to build him that allows his skills to be easily positioned and utilized while dealing with one of his biggest problems, being kited. During the mid-game, you should try to use your ultimate whenever it's available while assisting your teammates with pushing and killing opposing heroes. When it's on cooldown or when you think your team will benefit more from you farming, try to last hit creeps or farm stacked neutrals with your spin. During teamfights, you should use your healing ward as soon as possible so that your team will benefit the most from its effects over the entire fight. Then, try to use your spin wisely since you will only generally be able to use it once per fight. Try to use it at a time when your opponents are using most of their AoE abilities 
so that you can avoid as much damage as possible. After your spin ends, you can continue to auto attack your opponent or finish with your ultimate if you still have enough mana. When the mid game starts to fade into the late game, there are a variety of items that are all viable. Sanji and Yasha, Butterfly, BKB, MKB, and just generally any agility carry items. You should choose from these items based on circumstance. As for your orb, both Lifesteal or Desolator work fine. Desolator enhances your ultimate's physical damage, and Lifesteal gives you a decent amount of survivability when it's combined with your high damage and critical strike. As late game fights begin to occur, your physical damage output will become much more powerful than your spin damage, so it is generally wise to spin only defensively to dodge AoE skills and targetable stuns. I have often seen people spin offensively late game and deal less damage than they would have by simply right quick clicking their opponents, resulting in lost team fights and even games. Because of this, it can often be wise to grab a BKB in the very late game so that you won't be kited as easily with pesky stuns and slows while still being able to auto attack. That just about wraps up the gameplay section of this guide. Now I will go over a few cool things about Juggernaut and tips for advancing your gameplay. First off, I included Shadow Blade in my core items because you can actually activate the item and become invisible while you are spinning. This allows you to retain your AoE damage and spell immunity while also being invisible for the duration of the spin. This makes it even more difficult for opponents to juke you. Another effective thing to do with Juggernaut is jungling. Jungling is an effective way to farm, both because you can easily kill neutral creeps with spin and auto attacks, but also because enemy heroes passing by the jungle to move between lanes are often alone and can be easily killed with your ultimate. One last tip is don't be under aggressive. Early in the game when you have enormous damage from spin in your ultimate, don't forget that these skills both have defensive components. You are often much more durable than you think, between the spell immunity and momentary invulnerability. Thank you for watching our Juggernaut Hero Guide. This is WSLK telling you to rate, comment, and subscribe. Toodles!